Gilly the Kid and his cousin Wallow took over the rap media with their podcast, Million Dollars Worth of Game. But many fans don't know that before becoming a podcaster, Gilly the Kid first blew up after dissing Lil Wayne and the rest of Cash Money Records. From dropping diss tracks to getting knocked out by Beanie Siegel, this is the wild story of Gilly the Kid's beef with Lil Wayne. Gilly and Wallow first came into the rap game with their group, Major Figures. Major figures included rappers like Obliva, Bump J, Dutch, Rezzy Rolex, and other homies Gilly and Wallow grew up with in the Erie Ave neighborhood of Philly. Major Figs had a buzz in the underground scene in Philly after releasing a few independent mixtapes full of freestyles. Before they really took off, Wallow was arrested for armed robbery and ended up spending the next 20 years locked up. So Gilly the Kid had to leave the crew without his right-hand man. After they blew up in North Philly, Major Figures started going to New York to try and take things to the next level. They would rap battle anyone and drop wild disses just to prove they could stand against some of the best rappers in the game. The group ended up getting noticed by DJ Clark Kent, who introduced Gilly and the rest of the crew to other local producers. Around the same time, Major Figures dropped an independent album called Figures for Life that earned them a major buzz in the East Coast underground rap scene. Suddenly, Gilly and the rest of the crew were kicking it with huge stars like Jay-Z and DMX, and Major Figures started getting offers from big record labels, including Def Jam, Rockefeller, and Warner Brothers. They ended up going with Warner Brothers as a group, but also signed their own solo deals. Warner Brothers re-released Figures for Life in 2000 with some new tracks. The album did okay and reached number 115 on the Billboard chart. It also included Major Figures' biggest radio hit, Yeah That's Us, which made it to number 2 on the rap singles chart. Birdman from Cash Money Records heard Yeah That's Us and thought Gilly had major potential. So, Birdman offered him a deal to sign the Cash Money, which Gilly accepted. At the time, Lil Wayne was just starting to blow up. Wayne dropped his debut album, The Block Is Hot, in 1999 and followed it up with another project called Lights Out in December of 2000. Wayne was already popular for being in a rap group called The Hot Boys, but he still wasn't at the superstar level yet as a solo artist. When Gilly joined Cash Money, he started repping them hard. With the support of a big label behind him, it seemed like Gilly the Kid was also about to blow up and bring major figures with him. But before they had a chance to release another album, everything started to fall apart. In 2002, a member of major figures named Spado ended up getting arrested for murder. Even though they all got record deals, major figures was a huge group, so the advance money ran out fast. Spado went back to hustling and selling drugs and ended up catching a body. The victim happened to be the best friend of Young Chris, a rapper from another Philly rap group called State Property that was signed to Rockefeller Records at the time. Spado ended up getting convicted for the murder, and Major Figures broke up not long after. So the entire time Gilly was on Cash Money Records, he never dropped an album. But according to Gilly, he was always in the studio writing for other Cash Money artists, including Lil Wayne. After a while, Gilly started to get frustrated and wanted out of his deal at Cash Money. Gilly claims that he wasn't getting along with people at the label, and he had a disagreement with Birdman and his brother Slim over his publishing. Publishing and music has to do with owning the copyright of the songs and making royalties when it's played in other places. According to Gilly, Birdman and Slim weren't offering him enough for his publishing, which is why Gilly never dropped any albums on Cash Money Records. When Gilly talked to Lil Wayne, he realized that Wayne didn't even know what publishing meant and didn't really care. Gilly knew that if Birdman and Slim weren't willing to give Wayne his bread, he'd never get anything. So Gilly ended up leaving Cash Money not long after. At first, there wasn't any beef. Gilly thought he left on good terms and it was strictly business. Right after Gilly left the label, Lil Wayne started going on a crazy run. Wayne dropped the Carter in 2004, which debuted at number 5 on the Billboard charts. Then. Wayne followed it up with the Carter 2 in 2005, which made it to number 2 on Billboard. By that point, Wayne was blowing up in the mainstream and had the whole world talking about him. A few months later, Wayne dropped a mixtape called the Carter 2 Part 2 Like Father Like Son, and that's where Wayne's beef with Gilly the Kid really began. On the song Problem Solver, Wayne took a shot at Gilly, rapping, Gilly man, I don't think you niggas should really fuck with me. The gun off me, urgently working and twerking it perfectly. Gilly was shocked because he didn't even know he had beef with Wayne. Gilly thought he left on good terms and they were all cool. But apparently, Wayne felt different. It's still unclear why Wayne dissed Gilly in the first place because before that, it didn't seem like they had any problems. But maybe the rest of the Cash Money crew was more upset at Gilly leaving than he realized. Gilly clapped back by dropping the song Warning Shots over the cannon beat where he went in on Lil Wayne and Birdman. 
First, he made fun of Wayne and Birdman for kissing each other in the mouth, rapping, God damn it, Wayne Carter, you kissed Thunder in his mouth, what you Birdman daughter? You mentioned the kid, and you know Philly way hard. You ain't Birdman Jr., silly, you're Gilly Jr. Ask around the town, I'll cover the order. If you the fireman, then I'm a cold bucket of water. Gilly also accused Wayne of being a fraud and dissed him for giving up all his publishing, rapping, You're nothing like a G, you're more like a broad. You're Wheezy F, baby, but F stands for fraud. Come along, man, you're nothing like a threat. Four albums in, and they receive a publishing check. Gilly also claimed that he wrote for Wayne when he was on Cash Money, rapping, I'm about to show the kinks in your armor, expose some holes in your story, the fiction in the road to your glory. You fake Millie Vanilli, get slapped silly by Gilly. You're not real, not ill, not hard, a knockoff. Millie Vanilli was a pop group from the 90s who got exposed for having ghostwriters. So Gilly was accusing Wayne of being a fraud who needed other rappers to make him seem hard. Gilly also started dissing Wayne and Birdman on random street DVDs. Gilly claimed that Wayne and Birdman weren't really as tough or rich as they made it seem. Gilly said that Wayne once had to borrow his jewelry for a music video shoot and used him as a ghostwriter for years. Gilly even claims he wrote most of Wayne's bars on the Carter and wrote for a lot of artists on Cash Money while he was there. Around that time, Gilly also linked up with some of Wayne's ops. He appeared in a video with Gutta Gutta, Kid Kid, and Young Yo, who were also rappers that had left Cash Money and had problems with Wayne as well. On the video, Gilly shouted out other Cash Money artists who left the label, like Manny Fresh, Juvenile, and BG, but he kept going in on Birdman and Wayne. Gilly claims he left Cash Money because he wasn't getting paid. He was ghostwriting for everyone, but refused to give up his publishing, so he wasn't allowed to drop an album. Birdman offered him $300,000, but Gilly wanted $2 million. Gilly was willing to meet in the middle, but he said Birdman didn't know how to handle business, so the deal never happened. Around the same time, Wayne was asked about his beef with Gilly the Kid on a set of a music video, but Wayne just played it off like he didn't even know who Gilly was. Gilly kept applying pressure and dropped another diss track called Frontin' Like Your Daddy over the beat to Wayne's hit song, Stunnin' Like My Daddy. Gilly continued taking shots at Wayne for being fake, rapping, you're a lame, you mentioned in my name, teardrops up on your face, and you ain't never killed a thing. Wayne also dropped another mixtape called The Drought 3 and had a few bars for Gilly the Kid. On the track, live from 504, Wayne raps, I'm a shark in the water. Yep, I sim with the big, so I don't have time to deal with Willie the Squid. On the track, I'm blooded, Wayne also defended Gilly's ghostwriting claims, rapping, I advanced my flow, and they must like that. They like it so much, they say they write that. Barking at the dog, but I don't bite back. I ain't CPR, I ain't bringing their life back. So, the beef was heating up, and Wang was finally responding. But just as it was turning into a real rap beef, it suddenly went cold, and neither artist dropped another diss track after that. In 2010, Wang caught a gun charge, and ended up doing almost a year on Rikers Island in New York. While he was locked up, Gilly shouted him out and told Wayne to keep his head up. Fans thought that meant the beef was officially over, and for the next few years, it basically was. Then in 2022, the beef sparked back up again after Gilly and Wayne ran into each other during an event at Jackson State University. Gilly later went on a podcast and said when he saw Wayne, he tried to dap him up, but Wayne was shook and took off as soon as he saw Gilly. Gilly also said the beef wasn't that serious and that it happened a long time ago, but clearly Wayne still had issues with him. But Mac Main told a different story. Mac Main is another cash money artist who was with Wayne during the event. Mac Main went on Instagram and called Gilly's story cap and even posted a video to prove Gilly was lying. The video showed Gilly and Wayne dapping each other up and smiling, then both going in other directions. It clearly didn't look like Wayne was running away like Gilly had said on the podcast. In the caption, Mac Main also called out Gilly directly, saying he was lying for clout and shot down his ghostwriting claims, adding, and if you wrote the Carter 1, who wrote the Carter 2 and 3 and 4 and 5? So, it seemed like the beef was over before Gilly started running his mouth. But then it started right back up again, and everyone from Cash Money was back to dissing Gilly. About a year later, Birdman went on Clubhouse with Wack 100 and took shots at Gilly after he was asked about the beef. According to Birdman, he never made a dollar off Gilly the Kid because he never dropped a project on Cash Money. Birdman also said that Gilly was not a ghostwriter and never wrote one bar for Lil Wayne. Birdman also revealed the reason he fell out with Gilly and it had nothing to do with his contract. According to Birdman, their beef started after he saw Gilly get beat up by Beanie Siegel. 
Beanie Siegel was another rapper from Philly who was part of the group State Property. State Property was signed to Rockefeller Records and had a major buzz in the early 2000s. But at the time Gilly was signed to Cash Money, State Property was also in the beef with major figures. According to Birdman, they were in Philly doing some shopping when Beanie Siegel came into the store. Beanie Siegel saw Gilly, walked up to him, and grabbed him by the neck. Beanie then got off two punches before he ran away, and according to Birdman, Gilly didn't do anything. Beanie was strapped, but Birdman said so was everyone else in the group. Birdman didn't get involved because he expected Gilly to handle his own beef. But according to him, Gilly let Beanie Siegel rough him up and didn't do anything about it. Gilly talked tough, but couldn't even hold himself down in his own city, and he let one of his ops catch him lacking and embarrass him. So right there, Birdman lost all respect for Gilly the Kid, which according to him is why their relationship fell apart. WAC 100 later confronted Gilly about Birdman's story. Gilly basically confirmed that it did happen, but had a slightly different story. According to Gilly, Beanie Siegel tried to sucker punch him, but Gilly dodged it like he was in the Matrix. Gilly says he then chased Beanie and his crew down to the bus stop and said he'd catch up with them at a show in Baltimore. No one knows exactly which story to believe, but either way, Gilly's beef with Beanie Siegel is part of what led to his fallout with Cash Money Records. The problems between state property and major figures go even deeper than just Gilly and Beanie Siegel. The beef between the two crews actually started with Jay-Z and Rockefeller. Back when major figures first started popping off, Jay-Z wanted to sign them, but by that time, Gilly had already signed another deal as a solo artist. Jay-Z still wanted to sign the group, but according to Gilly, the numbers didn't add up. With seven different people and major figures, the amount Rockefeller was offering meant they'd have to go triple platinum just to make any money back. The deal didn't make any sense for the group because they could all make more money on their solo deals. Jay-Z was mad that the deal didn't work out. He already had the cash together and didn't want to give it back. Instead of letting it go, he went out and signed State Property instead. State Property wasn't even a group at the time. The members didn't even really know each other, but Jay-Z wanted a group from Philly who could sign the contract that was meant for major figures. He put Beanie Siegel with other rappers like Freeway, Petey Crack, and Young Chris and started pushing them as a group. Gilly and major figures started feeling like state property was jacking their style because they signed the exact deal that was meant for them, which is where the issue started. The beef really popped off after Young Chris from State Property started dissing Spado from Major Figures. Young Chris and Spado grew up in the same hood in Philly and knew a lot of people in common. But Chris heard one of Spade's songs and thought Spade was dissing them. So Chris went on the radio with the rest of State Property and dissed Spade in the freestyle. Spade and the rest of Major Figures clapped back by going on the radio and dissing State Property. Check the four corners of the city, I'm the man of respect. Oh Sparks, you talking shit, I got my man with a tech. Here come dirty ass Nina, it's time to call in the cleaners. They kept going back and forth until eventually Beanie Siegel ended up calling into a radio station while Gilly was on the air. Things got heated and they both started screaming at each other live on the radio. Why ain't time to come to Gilly? Why ain't time to come to Gilly? You use your, you, you lose that gorilla mentality. Young boys, you, every time, I'm, on, every time I'm around, you ain't no gorilla killer no more. I know you, dog. Don't come at us. Gilly even claimed that he once went to Beanie's hood and embarrassed him in front of his own people. Gilly also said that Beanie Siegel was a nobody before rap and that he wasn't as tough as people made him seem. So that's what led up to Beanie confronting Gilly while he was shopping with Birdman. Gilly was talking tough on the radio, but according to Birdman, he couldn't back it up when he got confronted. So after that, Birdman knew Gilly wasn't really like that and never took him seriously as a street rapper. Even after being blackballed by Cash Money and Jay-Z, Gilly the Kid still found a way to make it in the industry with his million dollars worth of game podcast. It seems like his beef with Lil Wayne was never really that serious and it all started as a misunderstanding. But now that Birdman exposed Gilly for allegedly getting beat up by Beanie Siegel, it's tough to know if his beef with cash money will ever truly be over.